Hi folks and welcome to the latest in our Meet the Manager series. Today we're going to have a look at the mining sector um, and specifically the BlackRock um, World Mining Trust. This is a investment trust that's listed on the London stock market. Stock market value currently around about 900 million um, and it's a constituent of the FTSE 250 index. So in investment trust terms a fairly large vehicle um, the lead manager of the portfolio is Evie Hambro. Um, he's been in this space for around about 20 years, member of the highly regarded BlackRock Natural Resources team based in London. Um, so, Evie, thanks very much for joining us. No problem. Maybe if we could start by just taking a simple run through of what the trust is trying to achieve for, for its investors. Yeah, well, as you as you say, the trust has been around for a long period of time now, and I've been involved almost since the launch. It was a part of my um, uh, my graduate internship was joining the team at the at the point that the trust uh, came into an existence. So the goal for the trust is to provide investors, you know, shareholders in this case, with exposure to the mining sector throughout cycles. So we try and pick stocks that will do well based on our view on certain commodities. So we deliver the commodity exposure uh, via investing in the equities primarily. We also have the flexibility to invest in unquoted companies as well, as well as royalties and also debt instruments um, but that, the, that the resource companies issue. Our primary goal is capital growth, um, but as a result of the kind of shift in focus from the sector today, where companies are distributing much more cash back to shareholders, the yield has increased dramatically over the last few years. So there's a bit of an income bias right now because the companies are paying this cash uh, and we're passing that back to shareholders of the trust as a result of the income we're receiving. Great, okay, well, well, we'll come back to the income issue mm. in a second. And um, before we do that, maybe we just talk about where the sector is relative to sort of recent history. And yeah. the last three years have been you know, not a great time to be invested in, in, in equities mm. in, in the mining space. Could you maybe talk through where you think we are today um, and, and, and just some of the issues that, that are the, the, the sector's had to, to deal with? Absolutely. So the, if we go back to the kind of through the trust's history, the trust has seen a variety of different cycles. So, you know, the, the previous worst period was during the Asian crisis in the late 90s. And we went through the sector, the time in the sector when we were incredibly unfashionable because we were old economy versus the internet and new, new economy around the millennium. And then we kind of went through the birth of the, what people now refer to as the kind of super cycle in kind of 2001, 2002, where commodity prices rose very rapidly over a, yeah, a period of time and the companies benefited from that increase. As a result of those increases in cash flows, the companies decided to reinvest in capacity uh, as a preference over sharing the increased cash flow with shareholders. So the sector went on a kind of growth binge. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we came to the end of that period in kind of 2010, 2011, where some of the overinvestment that had been made was, was uh, found to be wanting in terms of returns. And so we've been through this cleansing period where investors have left the sector, returns diminished, assets were written down, management has been changed and we've now kind of bottomed in the cycle and we were highlighting to shareholders in the middle of last year that that was our view and what's been clear since then is we've now got this recovery starting to build share prices are rising companies are doing a much better job and cash flows are being returned to shareholders and, and, and rising yields in this space so uh, all in all it's been a it's been a pretty good 12-month period since the bottom of last year and we've got very high expectations that this trend will continue uh, over the next few years as companies seek to re-establish that trust base with their investors right okay that's great and, and i think that that sort of fundamental picture you've outlined there it seems to be getting confirmed by the technical picture in terms of, of the you know, the, mark, the, the, the price is breaking out of that three-year downtrend, so that, that is encouraging. So just going back to the income question, maybe if you can just talk about, you know, some of the issues around why the yields have, have improved so much, and I think some people may have missed the fact that on black work, we're mining trust, the, the yield has effectively doubled in the last three years. Um, and maybe just talk about how sustainable you think those dividend incomes are. Yeah, so obviously we don't have a total control of the income because we receive the income from the companies. So as long as the companies continue to play ball, then we'll be continuing to receive that income and we can pass that back. The trust also has some other tools at its disposal to make sure that income is buoyant. So we do call option overwriting in the portfolio to sell volatility out to the, to the market. And we get some premiums in for that. And we also do uh, interest rate arbitrage by investing in uh, companies' debt securities at much, much higher coupons than 
our cost of borrowing itself. And so that tends to add, you know, one to one and a half percent to the overall um, trust's yield. So uh, you're absolutely correct that, you know, the yield has gone from about one percent to just under kind of three and a half, well, about three and a half to four percent today. So it's been a big change. It's very diversified, the income that we're receiving. So about half comes from ordinary dividends and then half from those other sources I was describing. And then the most recent thing that we've done over the last kind of two or three years is investing in royalties on resource assets. And this will be a growing part of the portfolio with rising income into the future as assets go through from development into production and start to generate cash flow. So we're very co uh, confident around the, the overall income mix and the ability for that to be able to grow over time. Right. Would, would you mind just, for the benefit of people who maybe aren't familiar with royalties, just briefly explain how, how, how they work? Yeah, so this is, in, in today's market and the la market of the last few years, uh, resource companies have been you know, finding it very difficult to raise capital to develop assets. So you know, previously they might have sold shares or gone to a bank to borrow money, but with the banking crisis the banks have been reluctant to lend. So we've been in a very advantageous position to be able to negotiate directly with the companies to give them capital and in return for giving them capital we've taken a royalty on a, on a mine. So we're effectively taking a share of the revenue generated uh, as the company uh, 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 extracts minerals from the, from the ground and sells them to a customer. And we get a direct share of, of that revenue rather than ha having a share in the income that's generated after the costs and so on have been expensed. So it's a much lower uh, risk part of the, 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 the capital structure uh, for us. Obviously we get direct exposure to changes in production which is, it could be good or bad, and also commodity prices. But by buying them at the bottom of the cycle, as we've been trying to do over the last few years, mm -hmm. we think we're getting in at a pretty advantageous entry point. Um, now, one subject I wanted to turn to was alignment of interest. Um, you run a number of, of funds um, within the, the natural resources team in BlackRock. Could you maybe talk about how your interests are aligned with the underlying investors? Yeah, well, I mean, I wouldn't be doing this job for as long as, at all, as long as I have been unless I was interested in the sector. So I continue to reinvest money back into the sector every year. In fact, BlackRock itself has a policy of managers um, putting part of their annual compensation back into the funds that they're exposed to. So I'm heavily exposed, as are my family and my children and so on, uh, to, the, to these funds. Okay, great. Um, and then finally, maybe if we just wrap up with a specific commodity or subsector that you think looks you know, particularly attractive right now? Mm. Well, the single biggest theme that we have inside the Trust today is, is exposure to the overall improvement that the sector is going through. So it's broad-based. We're, we're exposed to companies that are deleveraging, companies that are going through high levels of production growth because the market has forgotten about the fact they've been building these, thing, these mines and they're now coming into cash flow. So that whole restructuring theme is a, a dominant one that captures across the entire portfolio. The other theme as well that's similar to that is the fact that management is looking to increase returns back to investors by passing back capital. They're now doing that uh, as a, by a combination of increased dividends. They're expecting some very positive tone from the results that are coming out you know, over the next few weeks this summer um, with regards to share buybacks and so on. But specifically in terms of individual themes within the portfolio, the single biggest area that we have today is exposure to copper companies. So we think the outlook for the price of copper is going to be well supported by its own supply and demand fundamentals. And by building up a kind of mini copper portfolio inside the trust, which is about 24% of the trust's assets today, uh, directly and then indirect exposure by other companies as well. We've got exposure to the copper theme, but we've also got companies inside that area that have got very high rates of growth. Uh, and those growth companies are likely to be re-rated as people um, hopefully uh, come to the same conclusion as us that the copper market is, is, is very well positioned. And the most recent royalty investment we've made is actually a copper royalty as well. So it all fits within that theme of, the, of copper being a, a dominant part of the portfolio. Mm -hmm. And we expect that to remain the case for several years into the future. Great. Okay. I mean, thank you very much for, for your time there. Um, hopefully that's uh, whetted your appetite for uh, further information on the mining sector. If anybody would like uh, some information, we've recently published uh, a buy note on the BlackRock World Mining Trust, uh, so I'd encourage you to contact your broker uh, for a copy of that note. Thank you.